Tom says, I've come out of hibernation. Uh, I don't know if that means that radiologists live in cupboards all the time, or, or probably it means that I've retired, but I'm working two days a week now. And uh, when I started, uh, in, well, it, it was <coughs> 40 years, but anyway, I've spent 20 years here. And when I came, we started uh, an endowment fund for art. We thought that the magnolia walls in the department were rather depressing, so we started this. And we've built up a collection of something like 50 paintings, which uh, we think uh, everybody appreciates, but um, it's all in the eye of the beholder sometimes, isn't it? Anyway, um, art funding is really over and above uh, health funding. And um, in the perspective of things, if uh, the UK government or whoever spends 500 billion on, uh, or 50 billion I think it is, on uh, health care, then the arts uh, from the central sources is something like 300 million. And the question is whether we could uh, ease a little bit more into art and, as we'll hear from Margaret later on, ha have benefits for health from that. Anyway, a little bit about uh, just uh, my background, uh, what we've done here. And if you want to get in touch with us at all, my email is on the NHS net, and Margaret, uh, as you will hear, is uh, within the charity Art and Healthcare, and that's her email address there. So radiologists uh, are deal with imaging. I think that's probably why I became interested in it. And we see uh, ever more precise views of the human body, as you know. We live in a 3D world now. Um, in the department, uh, we've kept a two-dimensional art because of uh, a, a reasons of dust and, uh, uh, and uh, um, it, it's been easier to promote that. But there are sculptures and other things which can be uh, put into the equation. So um, we deal with images, and images can be directly translated into art. Here in Imperial College, they've taken a scan, and the Queen's unveiling this uh, new panel in, uh, in a few years back there. So that's a direct interpretation of medicine into art. Well, medicine has always been in art. You go back, everybody drew different things, Dura there. Here's, uh, does anybody know about the miracle of the black leg? I'm afraid I haven't looked it up, but uh, rather impressive old, old uh, painting here. So art and medicine have always um, been attractive subjects. Um, I don't know if Van Gogh uh, knew that uh, smoking was uh, a bad thing for lung cancer, but anyway, he, he uh, had this uh, skeleton with a cigarette, which was uh, perhaps a thought. Here's uh, a more recent painting of uh, oncology ward with chemotherapy patient. Um, you perhaps know this famous painting of Barbara Hepworth's uh, interpretation of a surgical theatre. And um, paintings uh, outside, you've seen portraits. Well, we have our three oncologists who look rather like the three witches in this painting by Ken Curry. You've perhaps seen it in the Portrait Gallery in Edinburgh. So there are some different interpretations of what you do with art. You can paint conditions or you can uh, do historical things and uh, paint people. Um, what we have done is to uh, encourage the local students uh, in order to bring them into the hospital and give them a public uh, venue for their art. We started all these years back having a student exhibition and we actually had the exhibition in the department and the winners were proudly showing their, their art there. This was Carolyn Thomas with Annie in the Sky with a Diamond. It was a sad story of uh, her sister who died, and this is her interpretation of that. A lot of uh, the students in the college, they have uh, conceptual ideas of how to, they interpret uh, their, their studies, and um, not so much figurative now. But uh, we, we had a, an idea to have the link between radiology or, or medicine and imaging and in our first ex exhibition, uh, Stephen Sutcliffe won with this image, which uh, either looks like an iris or a CT scan, depending on what uh, you want to take out of it. You've perhaps seen it in our department downstairs. Um, an appropriate picture for a waiting room. Here's Benny Esposito with uh, somebody uh, 
waiting too long for uh, the x-ray appointment, perhaps, I don't know. No, I think it's somebody studying. There's a textbook at the bottom there. Anyway, later on we uh, found that holding the exhibition actually in the department was uh, too difficult, and so we've annually now given a prize at the degree show, and uh, this uh, is a great occasion. We're honoured to get a preview, and on that year there, Ryan Gordon in the picture, uh, one with his picture of Sharon, which is in the background there. In, uh, this is a picture of the degree show, of which you've perhaps been to. Uh, rather splendid uh, charcoal drawing. Uh, the pictures vary. They have uh, l things that in the waiting room you can see uh, with a great deal of interest in them, or they can be um, to celebrate an occasion. Here we had this one painted for the anniversary of the hospital two years ago. Um, sometimes uh, the paintings are uh, said to be better if they have a more uh, naturalistic appearance and people, uh, by having a painting in the wall, can, uh, even if it's a windowless room, can it be an aperture they look through and they can feel more relaxed or uh, anxiety eased by having such pictures. Actually, this one was given us to, uh, by Lindsay Ewan because it was one of these huge paintings for her degree show and it was too big to keep in her flat, so she kindly gave us to it. It's on the way to the outpatient CT. Again, you may have seen it. So some uh, pleasant scenes I think people enjoy too. Uh, sometimes uh, abstract uh, scenes uh, create some uh, frisson and the department sometimes say well, I could do that better so we actually did that we said well we should have a staff exhibition and we had that one year and we voted for for the for the best art uh, uh, later on on the right there Jan Williamson went on to a, a, <coughs> do a postgraduate uh, course at the Duck of Jordanston so um, you, you probably know, know her son uh, Pete uh, who's a consultant now Anyway, after all this uh, was prepared, um, the Public Collections Foundation came along and they've been recording all the oil paintings in public collections around the country. And there's a Dundee volume of this and it's a, a lavishly illustrated book and you can uh, see that in libraries or uh, on the BBC website. You can actually dial up all the paintings that are in the hospital here that are oils. For some reason, they didn't do watercolours. Um, and so these are all recorded now and our collection in the radiology department is, uh, is within that too. But th there are other aspects and this is now going to go on to uh, introduce uh, Margaret O'Connor, uh, Chief Executive of uh, Art in Healthcare, uh, who will explain more. But there are other aspects to art and uh, some weeks, months, years ago, there was an exhibition in the foyer here of how pain patients uh, interpreted their art, their pain through art. Uh, this is um, from somewhere else, but it's a similar sort of theme. And um, so over to Margaret now. Um, another thing you may have uh, un unwittingly known the connection through is that if you remember the Medical and Dental Defence Union of Scotland, there their journal which comes out has an illustration each month from the Art in Healthcare collection and this was one from 2003. Um, so um, Margaret is Chief Executive as I say of uh, Art in Healthcare and I think I'll just leave it to her to introduce herself. Now perhaps Tom if you'd like to... Um There's the talk, it's not at the end. No. Uh, okay. Is it this one? We'll stick it on here so that it runs much more quickly. Okay, on you go. And it's just a right click, is it? Uh, yes, or you can use this thing. And then it points as well if you want, if you have a pointer. Oh, okay. Right, thank you. Um, thank you so much for inviting me along today. Um, as Roddy was saying, um, I'm from an independent charity called Art in Healthcare, but I, I'm, I'm aiming to speak about the subject more generally because obviously there are other um, organisations that are working, particularly in this area, with, as Roddy was saying, the Tayside um, Healthcare Arts Trust. Um, and, you know, we'll be kind of referencing work that's going on um, 
around the world, really, in this area. So um, I felt I ought to be trying to reference evidence. I thought that was kind of an important um, aspect of why art is important in relation to health, which is obviously the main thrust of what I'm going to be speaking about um, um, and we, I, th- I think we're very much looking at art in relation to health um, as a kind of holistic experience of health, um, very much an asset-based approach to life um, where art is an integral part, um, creativity is an integral part of the human condition, really. Um, but what I'll do in the first instance when talking about benefits is, is make a distinction between the concept of prevention and intervention. So... Um, First of all, on, on the prevention um, agenda, I think it's true to say that everybody has um, an experience of art and it's not necessarily just the visual arts. Obviously, there are various ways in which people are engaged with um, the arts, with creativity um, in their daily lives by attending arts events, but also, you know, kind of having craft skills and hobbies and you know creating a a home which you might decorate you know there's an entire range of ways in which art is an integral part of what it is to maintain good health and well-being um broadly i'm going to be speaking mainly about mental health um there are aspects of the arts that can be helpful to physical health as well dance being an obvious one you participate in dance activity you're both accessing the benefits of of that creative aspect of things and the kind of having a physical activity um, to improve your physical health um, but I feel that the work that we do is broadly in the area of um, preventing poor health um, poor mental health um, and when we're doing work to intervene, um, we're supporting treatment um, or providing an alternative to, pre- to treatment. So um, this would be a concept that you're very familiar with, you know, that people have needs. Um, and in a medical context, that can be very clearly a diagnosed need um, It's also important, of course, I'm sure you do recognise that for people who have treatment, say for cancer, um, that's very much addressing their needs as, you know, in physical terms, but they will have consequentially, probably, almost certainly, needs that are associated with their broader well-being and mental health. Um, So we tend to work in both these fields, really, that we're working with people who have had a diagnosis of um, of either a physical or mental health diagnosis, um, but we're also really working in that territory of undiagnosed need and trying to meet meet that. So um, one of the ways in which we do this is through our artwork loan service. We have some work um, on loan here in the hospital. Um, we loan art from a, a very large collection of about 1,600 works of art into hospitals and other healthcare settings. So we're also um, loaning art to care homes, GP practices, dental surgeries, treatment centres. So there's a very wide range of places where people are in receipt of medical services. Um, I should say that all of the images in this presentation are um, works of art from our collection. This is something that we bought this year with them. Uh, we had a trust that gave us funding to buy work from all of the degree shows in uh, Scotland this year. Um, oh, is that someone telephoning us? It probably is. <laughs> uh, great. We have to get your presentation back up again now, otherwise they're looking at a black screen, so are we. Hello. Right, Perth, are you there now? Can you see us? Maybe? Yes? Fantastic. Marvellous. Can you turn your microphone off then and we'll, we'll crack on? Thanks. <laughs> okay, this is a quote from a patient, um, somebody who wrote to us. Um, we've got this work of art, which is uh, Madonna of the Bass Rock by John Bellany. Um, it's located at the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary. And I'll just read his letter to us. Um, I broke my leg quite badly a couple of months ago, and that has made me rather too familiar with Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, first on the wards and now as an occasional outpatient. I'm on crutches, and until today, my left leg has had not been weight-bearing. That has meant that I'm effectively hopping and going any distance has been something of a trial. 
My outpatient appointments take place as far as from the main entrances as possible. Don't ask me why. Um, I've come to relish first sight of a work by Ian Hamilton Finlay that marks the end of my weekly trek through the corridors and to the doors of the outpatient's clinic. This may not count as art appreciation, but I think it's the best signpost in the hospital. Today, however, I was allowed to start walking a little more normally, albeit still on crutches. That makes for less grim determination and a bit more ability to take in my surroundings. It was Bellinis' Madonna of the Bass Rock that stopped me and had me look at all the corridor paintings properly. I suddenly felt much more human, much less defined by my injury. It's a really good initiative. Well done and thank you. I think I mean, we've been starting to kind of gather, I'll speak a wee bit more about evidence, um, but I think those kind of testimonials where people talk about being feeling more human, less defined by injury, is a very real, powerful um, piece of evidence about why art can be so important in a kind of medical situation where you are able to be distracted, um, engaged, inspired even by the work that you can see on the walls. So um, now to my handout, apologies to people in Perth that you don't have hard copies of this, but there can be, there was a, there's an email address at the beginning of this presentation, I can send them to you. Um, we are constantly challenged to provide evidence of you know, what art achieves, um, and we decided to just do a kind of summary of some of the main evidence that's been un undertaken, uh, it's it been gathered on the basis of research. Often the research is hospitals, as I say, we work in all sorts of settings, but um, looking at art on walls in hospitals has been the subject of research, um, and this is broadly the uh, findings of that research. Um, there's a little bit more detail in the handout, but these are some of the um, points that are made. Um, and within it, there are some kind of interesting little points that have been researched more thoroughly, um, which I find quite interesting. Improves doctor-patient relationships. That's, that's a nice one. I do find, some, again, some of the feedback we get, people say that when uh, patients are feeling anxious and worried, they, they may get into conversation about the art with you know, somebody at the reception area or with the person they're um, receiving some treatment from. You know, it provides actually a way of engaging in a human level um, in that medical context. Um, and one of my little ambitions, um, where I have been a patient myself at the Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, um, I'm sure it's the same here, the appointment cards that I get are these dreadful little pieces of white card with black print on it seems to me that there's an opportunity to just introduce art into that context why why can't we have appointment cards with art on it gives people a chance to talk and think and engage in a different sort of way and not to be having to associate a hospital experience with with the kind of illness agenda if you like i think we'll just skip over that one Keep an eye on the time here. Um, we've also been doing our own work to evaluate the impact of art because I think it's important to recognise that you know, in a hospital setting, you've got a va various kinds of locations where you could be installing works of art. They can be in corridors, in waiting areas, treatment areas. And it seems to me that the, the choice of area will have a different kind of impact. And, of course, the choice of art would have a different kind of impact. So... Um, we have started a process of evaluating impact by um, just taking a, this very brief questionnaire, which I've tried to stick onto a slide for you, uh, where we ask people on a scale of 1 to 10, you know, first of all, are you a visitor, a staff mem member, or a resident or patient? We never forget the importance of achieving um, good health outcomes for staff as well as um, patients, incidentally. Um, that we found a kind of series of words and asking people, you know, on a scale of 0 to 10, are you finding this work is engaging, welcoming, comforting, unsettling? It makes you feel better. It's not important to me. So we're getting some kind of feedback there. Um, and so far, we've only been doing this for the last year in a few settings. Um, so I'm a bit um, reticent about making grand claims. But um, I, I, I like our, our, what we kind of call our IKEA art question, the one that says, um, these artworks are not mass-produced. How important is it to you that they're originals by Scottish artists? That one gets a very good response um, because, of course, you can always just put in 
you know, kind of mass-produced print. So that, that originality seems to be much appreciated. And actually, for our, um, the, very often the patients that we interview will say that they never visit art galleries. So it's an opportunity to engage with art in a public building in a, in a particular context that's um, very much welcomed. Now, um, I said I was going to mention the fact that we are um, broadly dealing with mental health. Um, this is probably... Um, information you're familiar with um, and gives rise to that claim um, which feels pretty truthful to me that we're in the midst of a mental health epidemic in the UK. Um, one in four people um, will experience a diagnosable mental health condition in any given year. Um, and then the second point there about the extent to which the prevalence of that um, is greater um, in communities where other life pressures are particularly strong around poverty and poor physical health as well. Um, so um, this comes from, this slide is something that comes from a funding application actually that we developed. We did a project recently um, in Perth for the um, Rahalian Intensive Psychiatric Care Unit um, and we were looking at the research on um, uh, psychiatric care and art um, again, you know, it's not extensive and it is about hospitals. Um, but we were then commissioning artists to create some works, particularly for that hospital, working um, with, in consultation with patients and staff. And um, we very much talked around this concept of being person-centred. And that's true for all of the work that, that we do. Um, and through the process of preparing the brief, we started to think about what happens when a, an individual artist is creating a work of art that will then be seen in a hospital. Now, it's true to say that most of the work in our collection has not been created specifically for that purpose. It's the work of artists that they very generously donate to us. Um, but I think it does communicate something. There are these person-centered messages for every work of art that's on display. You know, first of all, pretty obvious one, but, you know, this is a specific individual, you know, that's responsible. There's a person behind this work of art. Um, and, I, and then we started thinking about how the artwork is kind of evidence of a transformation process where, you know, thoughts, ideas, insights have been captured and are now communicated visually. Um, you know, that that thought process, that creative process is something that we felt was going to be a really useful one for everyone to consider, but particularly in this psychiatric care unit. Um, this is artist Sharon Quigley, um, because it wouldn't be right for me to give you a talk about art and healthcare without saying a fair bit about artists, really. They very much want to work with us. Um, they very much want to have an impact in a healthcare setting. This is Sharon when she was in her studio. This is uncompleted work. It is now completed and is installed at the Rahalian um, Intensive Psychiatric Care Unit. Um, and I'm also just going to say a little bit about participatory work. So having spoken so far really about the work of artists that comes into our collection or, you know, comes in through Roddy's department or whatever and comes to be installed on the walls of hospitals, that's one aspect of the way in which the arts have an impact, a positive impact for health. Um, we have also, in the last five years, been doing participatory art activity. So that is back to this point about um, intervention, where that is um, a diagnosed need. We've mostly been working in partnership with the third sector, um, Alzheimer's Scotland, for example, um, but also mm -hmm. with the NHS, where groups of people have come together because they're in receipt of, of treatment. Um, our most mm -hmm. recent work has been with carers, um, very much... In, Care of stress is one of those kind of undiagnosed needs. Um, people who are supporting somebody else, they're known, therefore, to a carer's agency that we work in, within Edinburgh, um, and we're providing them with an opportunity to have a weekly art session led by an artist, uh, supported by a volunteer. So, again, this is taken from the handout that I have put out in the tables here um, in Dundee, um, that... The evidence shows uh, that participating in art activity in that very, you know, hands-on kind of way is really important for improving mental health um, and, and also for achieving something social, which is another aspect of things, really, that um, we're enhancing a kind of community spirit through that process. So for our art workshops, usually eight to ten weeks weekly, 
um, to our sessions. We're encouraging social interaction. It's a really important aspect of health and well-being. Loneliness, another major epidemic, as I'm sure you, you're aware of. Um, we're raising self-esteem um, and inspiring self-expression and communication. So it's very much about the process. Um, we have just uh, received some funding from the Big Lottery Fund to develop this approach further um, through a social prescribing model. And I don't know if you're familiar with that approach. It's um, whereby a GP or another agency who's, you know, providing advice and treatment perhaps to somebody will suggest that they participate in some other activity that might be good for them in terms of general health. Um, it might be art, it might be gardening, it might be going to the gym. Um, for, for us, we started a pilot project um, in Edinburgh with a general, general practice where um, a group of people with enduring mental health difficulties were brought together and um, the process of bringing them together was quite difficult to achieve because they were very, you know, it was a massive barrier to overcome to join in a group process when they have been attending regularly with their GP um, who suddenly says to them how about doing some art. Um, what we discovered through that was the role of um, the allied health professionals and we introduced a kind of stepping stone between seeing your GP and taking part in a community-based arts group, um, a one-to-one -one with an occupational therapist, uh, which allowed an individual to be um, talking about their own experiences, their goals, you know, their anxieties about taking part in art, and, and as I say, create a kind of bridge between that health agenda of I am a patient through to I, I've joined an arts group and I'm a member of my local community so it, you know it's quite a, a journey to take and we've, we've just received some funding from Big Lottery Fund to develop that now it's rolled it out further um, involving an occupational therapy element to the process so reducing stress and anxiety strengthening resilience developing community capacity um, and developing transferable skills what we hesitate to promise is that we will reduce reliance on medication. Um, there are some studies that are starting to take place. I was hearing about one the other day in Canada where over 25 years you can start to look at how participation in art um, is reducing reliance on medication, is reducing visits to the doctor. Um, so, you know, there are some quite tangible benefits potentially in relation to a reduced pressure on health services. So, just in summary about particularly art in healthcare, we're an independent charity. We've got a collection of art. That was our first purpose. We were set up as a branch of a, a charity that still exists in London called Paintings in Hospitals. We became independent. Um, we loan work from our collection, make a, we charge for that. And um, we do site-specific commissions like the one that we have just done at Rohalian, where nine works of art were commissioned there, but also um, I think 22 works were also loaned from our collection to really transform um, the environment and to create a more kind of homely human environment there. And we undertake art workshops. So 